The NFL playoffs is one of the best times of the year for many sports fans as they get to see some of the best NFL teams duke it out to be crowned the AFC or the NFC conference crown. Some of the finest games have been played in the playoffs. Now when concerning the best teams always playing in the playoffs is a lot of times not the case. As due to the amount of playoff spots being 12 and the amount of NFL teams which is 32 as we all know, some mediocre teams can sneak in. Now a lot of the times they can get owned by the higher seed team and that was that, but sometimes they actually end up winning it all as the lowest seed team or at least very very close now that and now that the nfl is flirting with the idea of changing the number of playoff spots from 12 to 14 some below average teams will get into the playoffs more often than not but when talking about this brings up the question who was the worst team to qualify for the playoffs well this question can be subjective depending on who you ask some people feel that whichever team had the worst record would qualify them as the worst team while others feel that the team with the least talented roster would fill that spot there are other different opinions but for the sake of this video i'll be going with the worst record now when thinking about that, only three teams really come to mind here, and no, it's not that 2011 Broncos team with Tim Tebow. That one had high consideration for it, but I decided to leave it off. However, it would be in the top three worst though. And the second team I considered was the 2014 Panthers, as yes, they did go 7-8-1. They were awful, but there is one team who I believe deserves this spot as the worst NFL team to ever qualify for the playoffs. But for the sake of it, here were the other teams I considered, in case you were wondering. Well, before we get started, if you happen to like this video, then before you leave, consider giving this video a like. And if you happen to be new to the channel, then consider subscribing to the channel as I post top 10s, players, and team stories covering all things NFL and NFL history at least two times a week, and you do not want to miss out. Also, I have a really interesting video coming out either this week or next week, so you do not want to miss that. But anyways, onto the story of the worst playoff team in NFL history. So the team I have chosen, which I feel a lot of you all know already, or at least the thumbnail or title completely gave it away but the team was the 2010 Seattle Seahawks. This team was not good at all in any stretch of the imagination. Now we all know that Broncos team in 2011 and the 2014 Panthers squad was terrible as the Broncos went 8-8 eight and, eight and the Panthers went 7-8-1. and one. But this team did worse than both of these teams as the Seahawks went 7-9. 7-9! You heard that correctly. A team with a negative record made it to the playoffs. At this point, you probably are thinking to yourself, how could this possibly happen? Well, in order to find this out, you have to look at the NFC West standings, and when you look at it, your answer is found. In 2010, the NFC West was like the current NS NFC East team, only a lot worse, as every team in that division had no more than 7 wins, meaning that they all had a negative record. I mean, just look at this standing list. This is awful. Now, let's first look at the Cardinals. Now, this one is a little understandable as they just lost their Hall of Fame quarterback, Kurt Warner, to retirement. So their replacement was Derek Anderson, who did not even play a full season. And their defense was a top three worst that year. Now, let's have a look at the 49ers real quick. The 49ers were still under head coach Mike Smilitary, so you already know that's not going well. Enough said. As for the Rams this and the Seahawks, they were actually battling for the top spot of the NFC West for weeks at that point, which is pretty funny to say when thinking of the context of the entire year of the NFC West in 2010. But I digress. The NFL playoff system works like this. Every division leader will get an automatic spot in the playoffs no matter how bad their record is, and since the Seahawks did have the best record and they broke the tie with the Rams, therefore they were marked as a division leader leader of the NFC West and thus secured a playoff spot. So now you all understand how a 7-9 team possibly made the playoff, but there's still another question that still needs to be answered. That question being, how did they do in the playoffs? And was the Seahawks team really that bad? Let's start by quickly going over the roster and why they had a bad record in the first place. For the roster, it was a below average roster as Marshawn Lynch was the only one on that team who was the only real prize on offense. And sure, Matt Hasselbeck was there, but he it was his last season with the Seahawks and he did not play a full season and threw for 12 touchdowns and 17 interceptions which was not good and show he was on the decline so backup Cody Whitehurst was the backup for a few games and he did not play spectacular either so there was no real passing game as for the running game the Seahawks had at the time two split running backs Marshawn Lynch and Justin Forsett who both ran for a little over 500 yards which was not the greatest so there was no real reliable passing game a below average running game and things were not great on offense as they were 23rd in the league in scoring with, with 19.4 points per game, 
which is not good at all. On defense, it was no real upside there, as it's con as it's consisted of aging stars like Lawyer Malloy and Jordan Babineau, and young rookies who could not make an impact to the team yet, like Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor, who were just drafted. So the defense was arguably worse than the offense, as they were ranked 25th in points against. So this was a below average team from the roster and the stat sheet. And during the season, nothing really stood out either, as if you look at their weekly schedule, it was like win one, and then the next week they'll lose one, and then they'll win one, and then win, and then lose. It was like this roller coaster, and until the near the end of the season, where they had a three game losing streak, and they lost three out of the four games to end it off with a seven to nine record. Overall, it was just a mess of a season, but they managed to pull through and make the playoffs. And their first matchup was the Saints in the wild card round. The Saints did go 11 and five, and were second behind the Atlanta Falcons, who went 13 and three. The Saints were actually a really good team this year, and and many people expected this to be an easy Saints victory. But when the game came up, it was anything but easy. During the first quarter, things were looking as expected. The Saints got an opening field goal and managed to force the Seahawks to turn over early as Matt Hasselback threw an interception. The Saints capitalized immediately as they got their score a touchdown soon after making the score 10-0 in the Saints' favor. With about a little over three and a half minutes left in the first quarter, the Seahawks managed to drive down the field and score a Matt Hasselback touchdown, making the score 10-7 in the favor of the Saints. But the Saints are not done scoring here. In the first two minutes of the second quarter, the Saints drive down the field again and score another touchdown, extending the score 17-7 on the touchdown run by Thomas Jones. The Seahawks were very quick to answer as they scored another Matt Hasselbeck touchdown with just two minutes later, keeping the pace with the Saints offense. But no, the Seahawks are not done as they manage to tie it up by kicking a field goal, but they actually take the lead for the first time in this afternoon with Matt Hasselbeck throwing another touchdown this time to Brandon Stokely, making the score 24-17. The Saints managed to end up the half by kicking a field goal, ending the half 24-20 in the favor of the Seattle Seahawks. During the third quarter, I guess Matt Hasselbeck still has his X-Factor on because he throws another touchdown pass, extending their lead to 11. Oh, and also the Seahawks scored another field goal, making the score 34-20 in the favor of the Seahawks. The Saints were not done yet, as they as they ended up scoring, making the score 34-30. Uh, now, at this point, it's about 3 minutes and 34 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The Seahawks had to end it off the game so they could steal their victory. They had to score here, and the player had to step up and become a legend. And one player made it happen. Marshawn Lynch managed to score the touchdown that sealed the fate of the Seahawks. The Saints did end up scoring again, but it was a little too late as the Seahawks did recover the onside kick and end up winning the game. This was an amazing game when, looking back upon it, a bad team rising up to the occasion and being a pretty good team. Now, the Seahawks do end up losing in a division round to the Bears, but in that wild card round, they managed to play better than any performance they did in the regular season, and that surprised everyone. Although they had that one good moment in the wild card game, the Seattle Seahawks in 2010 were not a good team at all. They just happened to be a luck in a lucky division where every team managed to do worse than them so a bit of luck and bad play by the other teams made this kind of thing happen and i don't see this kind of thing happening anytime soon but hey you never know there have been many bad teams to be to be a playoff contenders and although it has been subjective on who would be the worst team to make it happen and many people won't agree with me but in my opinion this is the worst team to even qualify for the playoffs in nfl history but what do you all think is this the worst playoff team and if you don't agree then who was the worst comment that down below and if you happen to find this video to be entertaining or enjoyable then consider dropping a like on this video and if you happen to be new to the channel then consider subscribing and i will see you next time peace out and have a good day